cursed land. You'd have to be mad to settle here. And yet, welcome to King's March. Hey guys, I'm back again with another video, and this time it's going to be something a little bit different to my other videos. We're not playing Elden Ring. Shock, gasp. This is going to be a video for my League starter in the new Path of Exile season. Um, it's a pretty impressive season. It's basically an entirely different game. Uh, there's so much to do. I'm not going to do a review of it here. I may do another review of it later. But long story short, I don't have a whole lot of time to uh, do my videos. And I still want to constantly put out videos because I enjoy making them. But seeing as I'm going to be playing a lot of Path of Exile, I figured, why not do some Path of Exile videos? So I'm going to start off my Path of Exile videos here with this league, uh, Settlers of Kalga. I mean Kalga. And uh, <laughs> this proves to be, or well, this looks like it's going to prove to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of changes. And my league starter for this is what I'm going to go over in this video. So if you're interested in that, if you uh, want to keep up, or you're curious about the Path of Exile, please, I hope you enjoy the video. So to jump straight into this, my build start for this league is going to be the uh, Lacerate Bleed Gladiator. With its new rework, I find it very, 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 very tanky. Uh, it has a lot of mitigation to where you're not going to be being hit at all. But I do have to add this uh, little addendum here. This build, initially, is the Lacerate slash Earthquake build guide that was put together by Zizrin. And there'll be a link in my description to take you to his guide if you want to look into that a little bit more. It's much more beginner friendly, I suppose. What I've basically done to TLDR the differences between mine and the original is I have taken what was essentially an incredibly safe, uh, tanky, lots of life for softcore build, and uh, I've taken the life part out of it in exchange for a lot of defenses. Um, yeah, that's basically the difference. I've I've soft core soft soft coreified it, <laughs> but I haven't done it kind of like pointlessly. I haven't randomly decided to take out all of the defensive nodes in exchange for just attack buttons. So I just wanted to put that out there. There is going to be a link in the description that will take you to Zizran's build version of this, which this is based off of his POB. So I just want to put that out there before I get too far into it. All right, so this is my character that I that I kind of tested the skill on. I wanted to do a quick demonstration of the skill Lacerate because unlike a lot of the uh, big, splashy, full screen clearing uh, slam skills that people are going to be using, this skill is actually pretty conservative in its size and its range. It doesn't hit very far. It doesn't hit very wide. Uh, most of our kill is going to, most of our uh, screen clear is going to come from our ability to clear the whole screen using our ascendancy. And some people might not realize because it looks so good on numbers and, you know, compared to how it actually is to play. So, this is just the basic level one uh, regular lacerate. We're obviously going to be using a slightly different lacerate in the end. But this is basically it. That's the extent of our reach. You can see it kind of gets to about where my mouse is and anything further and we have to move. Uh, it's still got pretty good range. So we're still going to be able to hit quite a lot, but it, it's, it's definitely not hitting the entire screen, right? Like you can see it's definitely not going to gonna screen wipe. So we're going to be relying heavily on explosions. And I feel like it's kind of important to point out what that skill looks like before I get into like talking about it any further, because it may not be what some people want. All right, so now that we've had a look at what the skill actually looks like to play with, you can probably make a decision for yourself if you want to play something similar to this or not. And I also have to point out at this point that this is not a build guide. I'm not going to take you through how to build it. I'm not going to take you through the leveling process. Uh, I literally don't have time, but thankfully, Zizarin has taken the time 
to do that. So again, the link down below in the description will take you to his video. He has a POB of the original version of this, and he also has an entirely fleshed out leveling guide for this. So if you want to play this build, I would suggest you play from his POB. Uh, I will link this one down below as well with my changes to it. I'm interested to hear people's opinions. Um, this basically is more of an end game change. I like to uh, look at where I'm going and then work out how I'm going to get there rather than gradually build my stuff up from the get go. So taking uh, the POB that uh, Zizarin had already put together, I essentially worked out how I wanted to make this my own because the combination of this right here as our annoying safeguard which gives us plus 10% uh, chance to block spell damage. And our ascendancy down here, determined survivor, and this ascendancy here, more than skill, has the ability to give us 94% block chance and 95% spell block chance. And from the get go, the moment I saw that, I was like, I want to do that. I'm going to make that happen. That's what we're going for. That's the whole. We're going to be so defensively hard to hit. That's what I wanted. Now, the original version on Zizarin's only goes to 65 base, which gets to around about 88 to like 90% block chance, which is still really good. But we have a few other things that I also wanted to put in, because in order to get this uh, block that high, I opted to use, uh, where is it? Tempest Shield. I opted to use Tempest Shield, which, you know, it gives us 25% chance to block spell damage, but on top of that, it also creates an immunity to shock, which, you know, that gives us immunity shock, our Pantheon gives us immunity to chill and freeze, and suddenly we almost, you know, we're pretty much safe against a lot of the main killing uh, status effects. So, we're already very tanky there. Now, I did play well around for like the longest time trying to work out how I could get this to work without using blood magic because obviously Zizarin uses blood magic. Blood magic is going to be very popular going forward to all the melee builds because we literally don't have the mana pools to do the things that we need to do. So it's become much easier just to spend the blood magic and use, uh, uh, use, um, where is it? And use eternal blessing to get our buffs out. Uh, and that's basically it. He also uses, um, on his version, he also uses Fortify. I have two different POB kind of layouts for this. I rather use Chance to Bleed because Chance to Bleed ups our damage, or ups the bleed damage, because Fortify here has supported skills still 19% more melee damage, but we don't really care about the hit that we're delivering. We're only caring about the bleed. So this is wasted. So you're only getting 19% more damage with ailments, which is going to be the bleed. And then you get 20% increased fortification, which is a defensive thing. Now, obviously I've taken this defense away and in, to, in turn of like doing that, I've opted to give myself, uh, I've opted to give myself flesh and stone. So Flesh and Stone, basically, being closer, because we're going to be using it in sand, sand Stance, so we get more Radius on our attacks, but not only that, when, when we're using Flesh and Stone uh, in Sand Stance, we're basically going to take 19% less damage from nearby enemies. And that's just going to be fantastic. That will help mitigate the fact that we don't have uh, Fortify on us. And in turn, that's allowed us to have nearly 7 million damage, whereas if you take all the modifiers and stuff out of Zizarin's and just look at the raw base damage, it's going to be around the 6 million mark, I think. Which, you know, it's, it's a difference of 1 million, it's kind of whatever. But it also is costing us a lot of HP, because to have, to have Flesh and Stone, and to have uh, Tempest Shield, because we have Blood Magic, it's going to be taken out of our HP. And this is where we get to kind of, this is a soft card build, because it only has 4,000 unreserved life. Now, I'm hoping this will be much higher in the actual game, because the new, uh, new armor pieces have both higher native defenses, so our armor and evasion should go higher, uh, which will in turn, you know, reduce the amount of damage we take. 
but also have a uh, higher HP scaling because I saw in one of the videos there was like a, an item piece that had like 180 uh, health on it, which, you know, that, that could bring us up to 5k if all of the, uh, all of the life pieces are, are basically double now or something or close to, you know, that's going to allow me to get closer to the 5,000 mark that we should be. But we have to keep in mind that we're reserving about 23, 23, yeah, 23% of our health because of, uh, because of all the extra buffs we want to have to increase our defenses. So basically, that's really the only changes here. You can see here I use a lot of these tattoos, which basically, you know, it helps me keep my decks up and intelligence so I'm not having to get bits of gear with uh, stats on. And that's pretty much the only differences that I've made to this build that Zizarin's running. So again, if you want to do a build like this and you want to start it, start with Zizarin's thing. My version is going to be changed. So that's basically it. That's literally, I've basically take, lost some of the HP to have more defensive buffs and I've upped my damage output as a result. Um, I think I can survive well enough with the 4,000 HP, if need be, because I've run vastly squishier builds with none of these defensive layers, and it's still doable, right? It might not be comfortable, but it's doable. So I'm thinking these defensive layers should make the 4K be perfectly fine. If I find that it's not, well, that brings me to the reason why I'm doing this as a league starter. And I suggest that every new person does this, and that is to follow a guide. Get someone that's been in the game for like years and years and years, follow their guide, and it's very likely that you'll be perfectly fine. So I have a few caveats here with this build. If this version of my build doesn't go very well, I can change to the Fortify version, which basically requires me to swap these two for these two. We lose about 600,000 damage by putting these two nodes in instead of these two. We change to Fortify. That will give us even more defensive layers. So we'll be even tankier. And hopefully that will fix the fact that we only have the 4k health. But I'm, again, I'm assuming to have more, but we'll just say that for now. If that doesn't work, I still have the ability to use Zizzer and build, which has far more life, a decent amount lower damage, but way more life. So, you know, if my, if my adjustments <laughs> don't work, I can always go to the one that Zizzer and put out. And if I find even still that I'm not having too much of a good time, we always have the option to change to an Earthquake or a Two-Handed Slayer, which are going to be absolutely crushing it for damage and just area damage. So that is why I'm taking this as my League Starter. It has so many backup plans, it's unreal. Uh, and I can always I can always respec to a Slayer with very little, you know, having to worry about it. It's a bit different if you, like, I'm playing a Gladiator and that doesn't work out, so my backup plan is to become... Uh, a Pathfinder, you know, that that requires you to uh, completely level the character entirely again, which is fine if you're a pro, but if you're not and you're like me, it's going to take you like six to eight hours. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. It's much easier to just play something that has multiple backup plans at the same time. So yeah, that's basically my build. My long-term goal is I want to use this character to get a whole bunch of gear and currency and what I plan to do is I want to experiment with the uh, new Warden Ascendancy that's come out. Like, I've, I'm quite curious of how Warden can be used with a variety of old builds. Uh, and the main one being, I'm curious to see uh, Elemental Tornado Shot Warden. I feel like that could be quite interesting. That's where I want to experiment. Uh, but first, I need to have a solid core that's going to get me my stuff, which is basically this. Um, the equipment on this... It's pretty basic, you know, the most expensive part, I think, is going to be the Rustluffer's Coil, because all of the physical, uh, the physical builds are going to be wanting this, and that's basically the most expensive part. I never have trouble crafting these kinds of items. Uh, you may have trouble crafting these kinds of items. Essentially, the best way to do it is to kind of get a set of gear that will allow you to just kind of get through the bits that you need to get through. Like you might scrap spell suppression or you might scrap like the some of the resistances or the armor and whatnot. Like it's not completely necessary. But the way that I always build gear is I'll target 
preferably I'll try and get a, like a fractured prefix or suffix that I want. So I'll like get the fractured 22% spell suppress. And then I'll try and complete either the suffixes or the prefixes. And then what I generally tend to do, unless I need to get like a Aisling buff on it or an Aisling modifier, I will just, you know, prefixes or suffixes can't be changed and just do a different crafting method to try and, you know, get those get those to actually be usable. And it tends to work out pretty well. So I don't really have a problem get crafting any of these armor pieces. Honestly, it's very easy to do. Like even if, even the bits that have the chaos on, you'll try and aim and try and get like, you know, the fractured chance to suppress spells. And then you'll just hit it with es with the chaos resistance essence until you get what a version that comes up with life. And then you can craft whatever you like. So, you know, these these these, these bits aren't hard to craft at all. Even these jewels aren't too bad. Like, because you don't need to get them that good. These are kind of the end games. Like I said, I try and target where I'm going, and then I work out how I'm going to get it, how I'm going to get there. So, but generally, crafting wise, these are really good. And as you can see, these stats don't include our flasks at all. Um, in the end, with all the flasks active, we go to seven point two million. But I, I never, I never judge anything with like the flasks on. Um, you will see that my effective hit pool is infinite. Um, it's not actually infinite. It's just the likelihood of actually being hit is so low. And the fact that we restore life when we're hit, it thinks that we're infinite. Um, if we go to uh, the calculations and we take off, where is it? Disable EHP gain on block and suppress. We take that off. Our effective hit was actually 592,000, which is still massive, right? It's just still massive. Oh, wrong button. So, yep, we can get rage. We can hit up to 30 rage. I don't have rage on here, but if we put rage on, you know, it doesn't really do much for us. But we 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 can get rage. Um what else do we have on here? There's not a whole lot that we use. Obviously, we take the blocked recently off. We can see our natural block, which is 75 and 78%. That's perfectly fine. If the enemy goes on low life, our DPS goes to 9 million. So the moment a mob goes under 50% health, our DPS gains about 2 million damage, which is crazy. And that's basically it. That's the build. That is, that is my version of this. So hopefully, you know, if you're looking for a league start, I can recommend this. I would recommend Zizarin's version because he'll actually explain things to you better than I can. This is just me going over what I'm going to be playing in the league. And the reason I'm doing this is obviously because I said at the start of the video, I'm going to be making a couple of uh, Path of Exile videos, kind of like a blog of my experience of the league while I'm playing it. So I can put some videos out while I'm playing it without completely abandoning my channel. <laughs> All right. So hopefully, you know, if you found this interesting or you're interested to see how this build does, how we go through getting to where we need to be. Um, I hope you watch the rest of the videos. And if you're this long, please, if you enjoyed the video, Leave a like, subscribe, do all the good stuff, and I'll hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Bye!